we're a very purpose-driven company, and our purpose is very simple, to uh, improve the lives of consumers around the world. And what we did was connect that purpose, which really is the glue that holds the uh, almost 130,000 employees of P&G around the world together, is this single-minded focus on purpose of improving lives of consumers. And we do that in a number of ways. I'll talk about some of how we do that, not only through the brands that we sell that improve everyday life, but also through the social responsibility work, the social investment work we do. We put together the external relations, P and, uh, external relations function in P&G in the year 2000. So one of the things we decided to do is step back and look at how we can communicate as one company with one voice. Now, we operate in over 180 countries around the world. We have about 130,000 employees. We have 42 brands that sell more than a half a billion dollars. We've got a total about 300 brands around the world. Trying to connect all that so it was integrated and we sp speak with one voice has been, uh, initially uh, seemed like a simple task. It's actually been one where we've invested a lot of time and effort to do that. Moving from a situation where we tended to be more reactive to very much more proactive and take a very strategic approach, communications is really at the heart of, of what we do. And in fact, one of the ways we've done this is Bob McDonald, one of his top three priorities for P&G is communications. So we've put in place a number of different tools to enable us to do this. Some of these are, are technology-based tools, better utilizing internally and externally some of the new social media tools and, and other technologies so we can operate in real time, be able to monitor in real time what's going on externally, participate in two-way conversations with our consumers and stakeholders, and also engage our employees in a, in a much more deliberate way. We have the tool that we call a message track. Many of you are probably familiar with this where you have in the center the um, what is the overall objective for what you're doing and then here there are three different components of the message track along with then what are the supporting points and then using this consistently. So some of the tools that we use here. One of the things that I found personally is a very impactful tool is the use of video. Many of you know more and more the power of video and communications and the power of, of effective visuals. One of the tools I've used is I carry a handy small flip cam with me, all of the traveling I do around the world, and use this video. This is uh, a video as a way to communicate very simply with the organization. We have a video blog. I can post the videos on the blog. Um, and this is a way for me to stay in touch in real time. Sarah's now going to play a short montage of some of the videos, clips from videos that I've done as I've traveled around the world over the last several months. Greetings from San Jose, California. What I'm, one of the things I found on, on using video is each time I'm very intentional, what is the objective I've got in the communication? Typically these are done for the, for the ER function, the 1,200 people around the world who work in external relations. Typically I found that keeping them short and simple is good. Typically these videos are less than two minutes, um, making a point being very clear and intentional about how to do that. And as I say, using real time as the way to communicate effectively. I was recently in Uganda Ken and Kenya for two weeks. What I did was record a number of different videos with some of our aid partners like UNICEF, World Vision, PSI, and then uh, put together a montage that we then used with our Global Leadership Council, which are the top P&G leaders around the world, to showcase, first of all, what we were doing on some of the social responsibility work, but then also, importantly, show how this directly can connect to us being able to reach more people in more parts of the world to improve their lives. Critical problem here in this area of Kenya. In fact, this area of Kenya has some of the worst health indices of any part of the country. The, uh, Having this purpose-inspired growth strategy of touching and improving more consumers' lives in more parts of the world more completely really does then give us the scale and the focus of how we can align our business to improve lives. Communications is a vitally important part of that internally communicating to align our employees, uh, externally to ensure that we're communicating effectively about our brands and about the company, and also with our aid partners, looking for ways we can bring our communication skills to help them, even in places as far removed from what we experience here, um, uh, such as the rural parts of Uganda and Kenya. I learned a number of things. I think, uh, first of all, I like the way that Mr. Hassel got out from behind the podium and, and spoke to us directly. That always means a lot to me when someone can speak without notes or, 
all of that. Um, I like to hear about the way that new technology can be used to improve our communications with our constituents. It's an opportunity to learn from another business that's very international and see some of the things they're doing on a large scale that I might be able to take back and make some use of. Uh, as far as networking goes, absolutely. I really came here today, wanted to talk to other people about uh, some of their social media efforts and what they're doing, and uh, you can't do too much networking. This is uh, my second month. This is my second event. I, I think I'm one of the newer members. Uh, I, last month, I was the newest member in Cincinnati PRSA. So it's great. A uh, very welcoming group, organization of people. It's a lot of fun, great networking, great speakers. Uh, last week, last month was the President's Lunch. And this week we got to uh, hear Chris Hassel speak from PNG. That was great. I won a Twitter contest. I retweeted uh, with an opportunity to sit with Chris Hassel and the rest of the president's lunch of the presidents uh, at the president's table. So uh, it was very interesting to meet him and talk to him for a while. Uh, great experience, and uh, you know something that I'm really glad I got the opportunity to do.